Family Theater presents Gene Peters and J. Carol Nash. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents Genius from Hoboken, starring J. Carol Nash. To introduce the drama, here is your hostess, Jean Peters. Thank you, Tony Lafrano. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family Theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our drama, Genius from Hoboken, starring J. Carol Nash as Giuseppe. <laughs> Sometimes a man will sell his whole life for a song. Such was the case of Giuseppe Faustino, a barber from the old country. Giuseppe came to the United States a good many years ago and, for no particular reason, settled in New Jersey in Hoboken. Like most Italians, Giuseppe had one reigning passion, music. And when he could take time off from his little barber shop, Giuseppe could always be seen at the opera or at the local concerts. Then Giuseppe met, wooed, and married Maria. And, of course, nothing would do but a first-class honeymoon at Niagara Falls. It was while they were there that Giuseppe told his bride of his life's ambition. This is so beautiful, Giuseppe. All of my life I have dreamed that I would have been married to someone like you and that I could have for my honeymoon at the Niagara Falls. <laughs> then, then, then are you happy, huh, my Maria? Oh, yes, it's so happy, aren't you? Well, sure, that's, and that's what a man is born for, to marry, have a fine wife like you. Someone wanted to love and live with, and to have a family with. Oh, Giuseppe. And the first one, Maria, big, strong boy, huh? That's the way it should be. And you know what we're going to call him? What, Giuseppe? Abraham Lincoln of Faustino. Oh. Because that the name means freedom all over the whole world. Yeah, that's what we're going to call him. That is what you wish, Giuseppe. Yes, Maria. Now, I have everything a man needs in his life. Everything that is, uh, except one thing. What is that, Dr. Giuseppe? Maria, can you believe this? All of my life, I've wanted to do something. Deep down inside of me, this thing keeps saying it to me, Giuseppe, you got a great talent. You must give this talent to the world. What is that talent? <clears throat> The creating of rich, fine violins. Violins, Giuseppe? Yes, that's what it is, violins. It burns inside of me till, till, till I almost go crazy with the desire. No, no, Maria, don't look at me like I'm crazy. I, I mean it. Think of the name. Stradivarius. He's known and respected all over the world as the greatest artist of his profession. And that's what I want to do, Maria. I want to do that because creating the violins is so great. That I want to do that. To give the world the fine music it, it, it so deserves. A hobby? Like a collecting of, of stamps or butterflies? Butterflies? No, 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 no. It's not, not a hobby. It's, Marie, it's a real. It's my reason for being here on the earth. I know it. Well, there's no money in that, Giuseppe. Well, no, not that right away, perhaps. But someday when I have become a known, all the famous artists coming to me, 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 Giuseppe Faustino of Hoboken. But the Giuseppe, you know, can I do that now? You have me, your wife, and a soon maybe a little family. They'll have to be taken care of. Oh, well, sure, sure, I know that, Maria, my dear one. I, I said, not right now. You know, I had $500 saved up before I met you, but I wasn't going to try then, but, but now we married and poofed it. Is no more five hundred dollars. Is that to make you unhappy? Oh no, no, Maria. It's only you I want. Always is you I shall always want. But some day I'm gonna make the violins. A 
A year passed and Maria and Giuseppe were completely happy and very much in love. The barber shop prospered. Another year went by and Giuseppe felt that he was nearing the financial goal he had set for himself in order to become Giuseppe Faustino of Hoboken, violin maker. One night he was sure of it and shortly after dinner. Was it such a good dinner, Giuseppe? You're smiling so. Ah, yes, Maria, my dear. It was a wonderful dinner. But now I'm going to tell you why I was smiling. I think... I think I'm, I'm almost ready to start making my violins. Then, what do you think of that? Would you give up at the barbershop, would you say? Please? Well, of course, making a violin, it takes some time. You just kind of fool around a little bit with it. Giuseppe, sit here, next to me. All right. That's it. You know, I'm afraid that you shall have to let the violins go a little bit longer. Longer? No, 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 Mary. Time is right just now. I've, I've, I've worked hard. I, I've taken a good care of you. I've saved enough for money. No, no, I can't let the violins go no longer. I'm going to start it tomorrow. No, 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 Giuseppe, you didn't let me finish. It seems you will have to continue in the barbershop. You, you're going to be a father. Well, sure. Marie, me? Me, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be a father? Are you, you, you really mean we, we're going to have a little family? Yes, Giuseppe, we are. Well, what do you know about that? Giuseppe, you are hurt. Angry? Angry, I don't know. No, Mary, you talk crazy. That's what I want, the little boy. A little boy we can call Abraham Lincoln of Faustino. Right? <laughs> I should say I'm not hurt. Why, Maria, you're looking at the happiest man in the whole world. Oh, Giuseppe. I, I was so afraid. No, 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 Maria. You got nothing to be afraid about. That's what I want, a little Abraham. The violins, they can wait. Giuseppe, Giuseppe, where are you? Well, I'm right down here, what do you want? It's a time, I can't tell, I get the doctor, Giuseppe, hurry. Doctor, yeah, 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 marry me, I, I'm going to hurry immediately, don't go away, I mean, well, stay right in the bed, don't move, I'm going to be right Little Abraham came into being, a fine, strong boy, just as Giuseppe knew he would be. Again, the months slipped by. Marie, born to be a mother, took on a beauty that was unearthly. And Giuseppe snipped on at the barber shop. Another year ticked off the calendar, and Giuseppe felt the violin urge coming over him again. One evening, after young Abraham was safely tucked in his crib, Giuseppe sat smoking his pipe and looking at Maria. What are you thinking about, the Giuseppe? My ambition. And how I long to see it to become real. I know. It's so much a part of your life. You want it very badly, don't you? Oh, Mary, I do. I do. <laughs> I do so much. I can hear them, my violins are singing into the night all over the world, bringing his joy to millions of people. And, uh, Maria, I think, Maria, that... Giuseppe, that... don't say it. Please don't. I must, I'm a girl. And I know what it is you wish to say. You have enough money again. Yes, Maria, I do. Hold on to it then, Giuseppe. We're going to need it. You don't mean that, 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 that we... Yes, Giuseppe. And perhaps this time, it will be a girl, a girl, Giuseppe. A girl, <laughs> That's nice. Oh, doctor, doctor, you, you were in there so long and out of here, I'm, I'm a dying. Is, is everything all right? Then? Yes, Giuseppe, everything's perfect. Congratulations, it's a girl. A girl? A girl, that's, that's a, just a fine, it's a wonderful. Her name is going to be Marta, just like the father of the country. Thank you, doctor, thank you very much. Another year slipped by and Giuseppe took in a partner and expanded. Now, instead of just a little barber shop, he was the proprietor of the Hoboken Tonsorial Parlor. One night, after he closed the shop, he sat staring into a little book. That's 425. Over here's another 10, there's another 10, and there's a 25, and there's 18 here. That's $488. I cannot do it. That's going to see me through, I know, and, and now funny, Maria. Uh, no, it couldn't be. I'll, I'm going to tell it tonight. At last, 
Giuseppe Fastina, Hoboken, Weilen, Mecke. Abraham did it today, Giuseppe. <laughs> Don't tell me he started school. I know he's a smart boy. He's only two years old, but Maria, I can hardly... Of course, he didn't start to school. He fell down and skinned the end off his nose. Oh, well, is he going to grow on again? If that's all ever happens to him, he's going to live to be a hundred years. Maria, I... Giuseppe, before you start, I have something to tell you. Please, Maria, this is important. It's in my violins. I've decided that now is the time to... You... You got something to tell me? Yes, Giuseppe. Is it, uh, it's uh, what I'm thinking? What is it that you're thinking, Giuseppe? Well, if it's, if it's uh, what I'm thinking, then I'm, 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 I'm... Yes, so Giuseppe, you're going to be a father again. Mamma mia! <laughs> Giuseppe, you've done it again. What do you mean, Doctor? <laughs> How long have you been trying to get to your violins? Many, many years, Doctor, but never mind that. Marta, how is she? Oh, she's fine, Giuseppe. Maria, I mean, she's yeah, all right, yes. too? Yes, and uh, it's another girl. Another girl? Yeah. <laughs> what do you know about that? Oh, well, as long as the first one was a boy. <laughs> what are you going to call her, Giuseppe? This one, this one I think I'm going to call her Victoria. <laughs> Doctor, she was a great queen, and maybe Victoria is going to be the same. A girl. <laughs> Wonder how that's happening. Again, the months flew by, and... Congratulations, Giuseppe. It's a girl. A girl? Girls, girls, girls. Always a girls. Well, Giuseppe, how's business at the uh, Hoboken Tonsorial Parlor? Well, Doctor, better than ever. That's the one thing you can count on. People always need a haircut. But tell me, how is it? Uh, Maria? Oh, she's fine. Just fine. And the new addition, he's one of the strongest little boys I've ever seen. He's a... A boy... Oh, boy, a boy at the last. That's what I've been praying for, Doctor. <laughs> yes. That's a boy. And that's why I asked you how you were doing at the barbershop. You're going to need a lot of business, Giuseppe. You're getting quite a family. Doctor, you know something? Hmm. I think if I'm going to put you on a yearly salary, then I'm going to save the money. <laughs> Giuseppe and Maria were happy with their brood. But the old ambition, which had been lying dormant for so long, once again came to life. And one night, just as he and Maria were finishing dinner... Maria, I have something to tell you. Oh, another fight with your partner today? No, no, there's nothing like that. We never fought anyway. Arguments, yes, but fights, you know. He was a very good friend of mine. Was a very good friend? What do you mean by that, Giuseppe? He's no longer my partner. What? Did you buy him out? Oh, Giuseppe, that is wonderful news. No, Maria, it's, uh, it's just the uh, other way around. He bought me out. For how much, Giuseppe? Two thousand dollars. That is a fair price. And what do you intend doing, Giuseppe? You know, don't you, Maria? Yes, Giuseppe. Make a violence. In the days that followed, a new light came into Giuseppe's eyes. He became a changed man. Years fell away from him, and he seemed to straighten somehow and become younger. He was engaged in making his first violin. No, 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 that's wrong. It's wrong. Well, I'm going to try again. From early in the morning until late at night, Giuseppe worked on that first violin. His method was one of trial and error. And slowly, the instrument took shape. The sound box, the neck, the bridge. Magically, they all fitted into a perfect hole. And to Giuseppe, it was the most thrilling violin in the world. One night, very late. Maria! Maria, Maria, come on, wake up. What, what is it, Giuseppe? Wake up, Maria, it's finished. Look, look, Maria, my first violin. Isn't that beautiful? Look, look, the finish. So bright, and yet, you're a soft look it has to. Think of it, Maria. All of the fine music of the whole universe is, is wrapped up right in here. All the music of the great composers, they can all be heard on these four strings. And, and I, I did it. I made this. It's me, Giuseppe Fastino. I did it, Maria. Maria, I, I, I take it tonight. 
I'm the happiest man in the whole world. <laughs> Giuseppe, something has to be done about Martha. She needs a new dress badly. She feels so strange about even going to school. Well, all right, the new dress she's going to have. She deserves it. The Martha's a good girl. But when, Giuseppe? When, well, well, perhaps tomorrow. Giuseppe, when will you be finished making this violin, the one you're working on? Oh, this one? You know something? I think this is the finest one I have yet made. Yeah, yes, I know it is. But when will it be finished? How is it going to be finished tonight? And when is it finished tomorrow? It, it will be my, my masterpiece. Good. Because we need money, Giuseppe. Not just tomorrow, but we need the money right now. And there will be no more violence until we get it. <laughs> So Giuseppe put away his dreams and returned once more to his place as number one barber of the Hoboken Tonsorio Parlor. Little by little, he put his family back on his feet, but his mind was ever on his precious violins. Now, life became a humdrum affair indeed for Giuseppe Faustin. Giuseppe, you've hardly eaten a bite. Is something wrong? Wrong? No, 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 it's nothing wrong. I, I just seem to be so tired these nights. That ex partner of mine, Guido, <laughs> what a business he's doing now. He's put another chair today. He did. How many does that make now? Ten. Eleven with me in a number one chair. Yes, I just said, that's where you belong, in a number one chair. No. That's not the where I belong. Ah, I don't know what you mean, Joseph. It's our doorbell, Giuseppe. Yeah, no, Mary, but, but, but it's so late, nobody's ever... Aren't you going to see who it is, Giuseppe? Huh? All right, all right. Oh, good evening, sir. Uh, can I help you? It's just possible you can. Is this the home of Giuseppe Faustino? Yeah, sure, I'm a Giuseppe Faustino. Just the man I'm looking for. My name is Brandt, Alexander Brandt. Alec... Alexander Brandt? Alexander... No, no. He's the greatest violinist in the world. You, you, no, 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 sir, must, it can't be, must be some mistake. No, Signor Faustino, there has been no mistake. I've come to see you, you and your violins. You see, I've heard about them. Mr. Brent, I like this way, my story is, light, light is so bad, I hope you're gonna forgive me. Just a little bit. Uh, more over here, that's right. Uh, had this. That's my workshop. I apologize. Is it not so clean? To think the great Alexander Brandt would honor me with his presence. If I'm on in, then I'm making it much more cleaner. No but, nonsense, uh, Mr. Faustino. That is quite unnecessary. Now, the violins. You see, I heard about your work quite by accident. One of the musicians in the Philharmonic is one of your customers. Gets his hair cut quite short, I believe. That's right. <laughs> he was telling me about your, uh, your life's ambition. I, I know what you mean. He's a, he's a second of violin section. You see, Mr. Faustino, I own two Stradivari and one Guarneri, the finest violins in the world. But even the greatest, to me, now, lack something. And for the last 20 years, I've been on a search. A search for something I'm not quite sure exists. You know, well, what's that, the maestro? Well, I'm not certain. It's a song, a symphony, and perhaps it's life itself. A certain note, a ringing richness that typifies all that is real in the world. I can't quite define it, but somewhere, somehow, I must find that in the violin. So far, I've been unsuccessful. I've looked all over the world, but nowhere can I find that tone in the violin which I seek. May I see yours? Mine? Um... I'm, I'm, I'm honored, Maestro, but it is a violin. It's just, uh, just a something the little fellas have made. They don't compare with, with instruments you've ever seen. Well, that's just it, Mr. Faustino. You never can tell. And now, let me see them. All right, yes, sir. Here, Maestro, this is my first violin. I'm, I'm afraid it is not so much. At the time, I thought it was the most wonderful thing ever made, but 
but then I'm, an, I'm not too sure. Your first? Well, this is incredible. Why, this is exquisite workmanship. Maestro, thank you. Ah, this one. Now, what is this? Never have I seen such a violin, such craftsmanship, such consummate craftsmanship. From where did this come? That's a minor. It's the last one I made. I'm very proud of that one. And, well, you should be. It could be compared to one of the masters of hundreds of years ago. The texture of the wood, the seasoning. I have never seen anything like this. Maestro, that the one is my favorite. Ah. Uh, I see no mark. Your name. It doesn't appear anywhere well, here. Well, no, sir. I'm, I'm never put no name and no mark and nothing on anything. Oh? Well, Signor Faustino, I thought you were an established violin maker. No, no, sir. It's, it's nothing. Uh, it's nothing. It's, it's, it's like my wife has said. Uh, she's the one who called it uh, a hobby. Oh, a hobby. Well, thank you very much. I, I'm afraid I shall have to be on my way. Yeah, but I must... Uh, it was very kind of you. Perhaps someday when you're in town, you'd like to hear one of my concerts. Just ask for me and... No, maestro, 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 please. Please. Before you go, just, just do me one, one a little favor. I should be getting back to the... Oh, very well. What is it? This one. The last one I made. Play it for me. Play it just a little bit. You do that for me, please. You see, my mama never... I'm never heard any of the violins I'm a maid. I, I don't play myself. You don't play? That's true, Maestro, but you don't know how long inside the ear. How long I want to listen to someone play one of them, and you it would be such an honor to have you be the first. Don't make no difference what instrument is a good or not, the Maestro. At least, at least I'm going to hear it, please. Won't you play a little bit, please? But I. Oh, very well. I have a few moments. Why? Why, th that's amazing. What, the maestro? I can't believe it, but perhaps my search has ended. <laughs> Faustino! Whether you know it or not, Hoboken has a genius in its midst. I, I don't understand. Shh, please, please. Sweep them up. I want to see that a number one a chair looking nice and neat and clean. Big shoot, big shoot. Coming into work in your best suit. Stand around like a boss. Do no work. Is that any way to treat your partner? Well, that's the way you do to me when I'm a first worker. What are you? Okay, okay. I keep my mouth shut. <laughs> hey, just to think, Guido. Just a year ago, the maestro buys my violins. Now I'm a famous. Yeah, yeah, famous. Now you're not cut the hay no more. Just stand around and be ah, a big shoot. Ah, a big shoot. Ah, you're right, Guido. I work hard all of my life for this. The biggest bob shop in all the Hoboken, and I think a chance. And by golly, I sell my violins. I got a right to be a big shot, huh? Uh. Uh, and no more haircuts for me, Guido. No, sir, I'm gonna live my life like this guy Riley's. Working a slave all the time, what for? Not for me, I'm a good... Good afternoon, Signor Faustino. Oh, my... Maestro, I, I, I didn't expect to see you. I had to stop off just to see you again. A concert, Maestro. I heard about the concert last night. Biggest success. Oh, uh, the greatest success in my whole career. Your violin made music never heard before. Oh, but let's talk about that later. Giuseppe, this shop of yours, it's the most beautiful barber shop I've ever seen. Oh, well, that's a thanks to you, Maestro. No, thanks to you, Signor Faustino, for making me the greatest violin in the whole world. You, you took kind. And now, Maestro, if, if you do me just one little favor, it would make all of my happiness complete. But of course, what is it? Well, uh, you just said that I'm made of you the greatest violin in the whole world. Now, please, just sit in my chair. I'm going to take off my coat, and I'm going to give you the greatest haircut in the whole world. <laughs> the 
This is Jean Peters again. You know, it's an interesting art, violin making. The luthier must select his woods with great care and age them until they're exactly right for carving. He must tool them patiently and skillfully. And then he must select the varnishes that will give his violin the most beautiful finish and at the same time seal the pores of the wood to ensure pure, perfect tone from the finished instrument. For no matter how beautiful the flaming or masterful the carving, unless the instrument can serve its eventual purpose well, it can have no real value. The right kind of work and the best ingredients must go into each violin in order to have the right kind of tone come out. There's a similarity between violins and raising a family. If parents want their children to grow up correctly and have complete and happy lives, they must see that they have the right ingredients, a good home life, an environment rich in love, a measure of security, and most important of all, a familiarity with God. Family theater urges you to pray together as a family, to secure these things for yourselves and for your children. For through family prayer, you bring God into your family. You invite his blessings on yourselves and your household, and you ensure that measure of security and environment of love that comes with family unity. For the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you Genius from Hoboken, starring J. Carol Nash. Jean Peters was your hostess. Others in our cast were Virginia Gregg, Ted DeCorsia, Norman Field, and Pat McGeehan. The script was written by Monty Masters, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman, and was directed for Family Theater by Joseph F. Mansfield. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program by the Mutual Network, which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lofrano expressing the wish of family theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to join us next week when family theater will present The Continental Cowboy, starring Adolf Manjo and Stephen Dunn. Join us, won't you? Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Mm -hmm.